<laughs> Hi everyone, Toothany Cute Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Marching Church album. <laughs> Marching Church is the third band to capture the attention of the indie music circuit and also be fronted by singer, songwriter, guitarist Elias B. Ronenfeld, also known for fronting groups such as VAR and Ice Age, one of the better noise rock and post-punk bands of the past several years. They have got an incredibly solid discography so far. I recommend you listen to it. Their last LP over here was easily their most ambitious. They stayed in touch with their punk roots while simultaneously bringing on some horns, some strings, some folk instrumentation, which was just as chaotic as the guitars, the drums, and the vocals typically are in an Ice Age album. And through this chaos, surprisingly, more complex songs shined through. It was just a really creative and diverse rock album. So it's not surprising to hear that there was some creative spillover into a, another project, Marching Church, which at one time was just a lowly side project for Elias, but now he has built it into a full-fledged band, its own independent thing, where I'm guessing he's uh, maybe a little bit more the star of the show. Let's also not ignore the fact that there are other members of this band that have been featured in groups such as Sextrome and VAR and Lower. I mean, we just have a, a, a collection of post-punk misfits from Denmark on this album. And compared to their other projects, the members of Marching Church are taking a noticeably different approach to writing and performing on This World Is Not Enough. This is a rock album, but the songs feel just looser, just more in the moment, a little more chaotic, a lot of repetition in these tracks of riffs and rhythm patterns and chord progressions. And as they are repeated, they sort of go in this roller coaster of intensity, sometimes building up, sometimes falling down, until it all meets some kind of climax or sense of closure. There are eight tracks on this album, and the record is 50 minutes long. Some of these songs number up to six, seven, eight, or nine minutes. And there's some pretty varied influences on this record. We have some soul here, some punk and noise rock, experimental rock, some blues rock as well. There's also one track that kind of feels like a bit of pop rock from the 60s. There's this big, grand, you can't always get what you want-esque instrumental expansion on the song King of Song. There's some spoken word here, and the same kind of instrumental palette that you might have heard on the last Ice Age LP, with the horns and the strings and the kind of folky instrumentation here and there. But no matter what the stylistic vibe, what pulls all these songs together, are these kind of loose, in the moment, somewhat improvisational performances, which tends to make these songs feel less than to the point. Even some of the shorter tracks on here, like the opener, feels like it kind of goes on forever. Often what ends up hurting this album is that there might be some decent song ideas on these tracks, but they are drawn out to the point where they turn kind of dull, sort of like an overused knife. Kind of like the song Hungry for Love, where we get some freakish and intense vocal embellishments throughout the entire track, and it's pretty great that the instrumentation moves very closely in tune with the vocals in terms of just sound and intensity. It just feels like everybody on this record is, is very much in tune with one another, 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 but it's not like the performance and the writing is so fantastic that it justifies the seven minute length of the song. It really could have used maybe a bit more forethought and a few more changes. And some songs on this LP feel like they had a bit more planning involved, like the track Your Father's Eyes, which has some really awesome horn work in the track and has a bit of a, a waltz to the groove. Sort of sounds like the soundtrack to the most depressing prom ever in the history of the world. And the song moves through several different instrumental shifts without a hitch. It's a good track and pushes beyond that seven minute length. I think there are some high points on this LP, but I can't shake the feeling that maybe this album is, is really only going to be entertaining for Ice Age listeners. Because it is just a, a little 
indulgent, as Elias's uh, freakish vocal performances are often the focal point on these tracks, and any ambitions for songwriting kind of take a back seat. I think the main mission of this LP is emotional intensity and just tension building with the instrumentals, which ends up making the other tracks on this album not memorable for being catchy, just kind of memorable for different sounds and different emotional moments that are kind of able to stir up. Like the song Every Child, which features just multiple overdubbed vocals that are just incredibly weird and uh, just, just very odd. There's just some weird mixing on this track overall and a kind of off-kilter piano phrase too. Uh, it's, it's maybe the most demo-ish sounding song on the whole LP. The song Up a Hill is chilling. It's menacing. Nine minute length on this track, but doesn't sound too tiresome compared to other songs on here. And the closer sounds like a pretty good ballad, but um, it's like dying. It's like on its last breath. <laughs> All of the vocal quirks that you might catch on an Ice Age album are here in spades. Like, they're all just turned up to 11. The moments where Elias is so overcome with emotion that he can't even bring himself to carry a melody. Uh, that, that's essentially how this album ends. This was a pretty decent album. Me, as an Ice Age fan, I found it entertaining, and while I do appreciate that the band might not want this project to be seen as a side project. I mean, I, I kind of find it more to be like a Danish underground rock supergroup instead, really. But still, it kind of feels side project-ish, as it reads like a much more radical and indulgent version of what we have already heard from this handful of bands, Sex Drone Blower, Ice Age, and VAR. I thought there were some interesting ideas on this LP, some cool left hooks, but points of this album can be kind of patience trying, and, and the record isn't even that long. I'm feeling a decent strong six on this thing. Tran, Zishin, have you given this album a listen? What did you think of it? Did you love it? Did you hate it? Why? What do you think I should review next? And that's it. Anthony Fantano, Marching Church, forever!